there's something to be said about the classic RPGs of the 90s, ones like Planescape, Shadowrun, and Diablo, to name a few. Then you have party-based RPGs like Baldur's Gate that are considered a classic. Now, what made these games so incredible, and why did they disappear over the years? Well, I'm Vulcan, and let's talk about it. There seems to be a growing interest for party-based RPGs, or those featuring a heavy Dungeons & Dragons influence, to return to the spotlight. In the recent years, we've seen games like Pillars of Eternity, Divinity Original Sin, and its sequel garner some major attention from the industry. Showing a renewed interest in this subgenre has actually led more studios to begin making more of these games, one of which is Gamera. It's an Italian studio working on a game called Alaloth, Champions of the Four Kingdoms. Now, Alaloth is a complex game, and it takes inspiration from the traits of those older RPGs and mixes them with the aspects of newer titles like Dark Souls and creates a challenging adventure. The game itself actually takes place in a fantasy universe filled with dangerous quests, deep exploration, and a combat system that rewards quick reflexes and offers a hardcore experience. That's where the Dark Souls part comes in. Now you actually begin the game by creating a hero. Standard issue, right? You go through a character creator, but unfortunately the character creator is limited to four races. The staples of any fantasy game, humans, elves, dwarves, and orcs and you will actually always begin the game as a warrior. But there are three specializations. It does come in three different flavors. Sword and shield, two-hander, or dual wielding. But don't worry, d never fret. It's okay, because as you progress the game, you actually evolve this hero into a more complex warlord. You mix various professions, things like a defender, an elementalist, a necromancer. These all grant you additional abilities, such as evoking the power of a dragon, being able to cast spells, maybe taking your two weapons and whirlwinding, um, maybe beast taming. I mean, at this point, anything can happen. But all these cast at a cost, and there is a high time of recovery. So be aware of what you're doing. Now, while we don't have much information on how the actual skill system or the class system works, this is something I am so anxious to hear more about because if this is anything similar to Grim Dawn, right, by, quote, mixing two different ways of power, as they call them, or classes, then we're looking at a pretty solid class system and a strong advancement system with a high potential for builds. And by doing that, that offers high replayability. So I'm really hoping they go down this path. I think that would be wise for them. But creating your character doesn't end there, right? You're also asked to choose a god to worship and a house or clan to fight for, which one you want to represent you. Now these choices affect so many different things. Your moral alignment, your alliances, your intrigues, your tips, your interactions, your quests, your reputation, your vendors. Essentially by choosing this, you are actually dictating which storyline that you want to experience. Now. The Steam page mentions 40 plus houses and clans to choose from, which is an insane number. I mean, does this mean actually 40 different paths for the game to travel down? I'm not sure, but either way, I mean, we're looking at some serious replayability. Most likely, there's four races, so 10 houses and clans per race is what I'm assuming. But either way, I mean, that's still some solid replayability. Speaking of replayability, Alaloth is a pretty large world, right? And you want to have fun with your friends. So we're looking at a four player co-op feature and you can either group with players, right? Group with your friends and help them out or you actually may end up battling them, facing them to gain access to the final boss in a showdown. This is such a cool system. Now, if this is how it sounds, right? And like I said, there's no gameplay of this. We don't know. But if this is actually how it sounds, where you can you, know, you team with your buddy, hey, what's up, man? Let's go you know, die some dungeons. You can do that. Or you can be the guy who, you know, you have a couple of friends over here, a couple of friends over here. You got two and two. And you guys both work through the game. And then right before you get to the final boss, you guys actually face each other in a just death match you know the winner gets to face the final boss the loser gets to you know head back to the town and uh, repair their gear great system love it but like i mentioned Alloth is a large world and you can never assume that everyone has friends that are going to play the game with them and the developers don't expect you to travel it alone so they're actually offering 12 quote memorable companions that are actually ready to join you or fight you in your journey 
this is pretty awesome. Now, my assumption here is that you actually end up with a party of like five or six, and you have to choose which one you want to join your party, which one you want to fight in a duel. You know, it's gonna be those type of systems where it's like you have to choose between Jill or Mark. If you choose Jill, Mark leaves, or maybe he like attacks you. Or if you choose Jill, you don't get Mark, but you also don't get Peter down the road, but you do get access to Sarah. I don't know. There are so many different things, but this system is incredibly reminiscent of those classic RPGs where you build out your party, you make those choices along the way, and you kind of round off your adventuring party. I'm an absolute sucker for these type of things, and it really allows the game to be memorable in those decisions. Oh man, I chose Jill. I shouldn't have chose Jill because she ended up betraying me, and now I'm down a person, and I'm, I, I don't have an archer now, so that's bad. You know, those type of things. So it's so cool, and I'm really looking forward to it. But an RPG that features a cast of characters isn't complete without your loot, your gear, the equipment, the stuff that makes you a better fighter, a tougher tank, or maybe able to heal wounds a little more efficiently. Now, loot is earned in this RPG by your traditional means, right? Crafting with rare elements, receiving gifts from quests, gaining reputation, earning rewards those different ways. But depending on how you create your character, you may have access to different recipes, different quests, or maybe different reputation vendors are actually gated off or opened up. And this will change each time you play and each time you choose a different background or create a different character. So choose wisely because it would be extremely unfortunate if you chose the path of an elementalist, a mage. But your reputation vendors and recipes were all defender focused, so now you're kind of stuck. You have to hope for loot drops and you can't really get anything from town. But reputation though, this system is, I mean, it's very simplistic. It's earned via contracts, right? Simple missions, simple rewards, very simple stuff. But there are also complex quests. They're longer, they require more effort. Sometimes they even send you into various dungeons. These dungeons are scattered across the globe and they're infested with dangerous traps, with creatures. But guys, these are the requirements for gaining levels, for gaining that loot and for getting that reputation as a hero because as such are the trials of a hero. So by this time, some of you are probably thinking this all sounds familiar. This game is very similar to another one or two out there, and you guys would be absolutely correct. Absolutely, because one of the key developers behind this game, and forgive me if I butcher his name, is Chris Avalone, or Avalone, a screenwriter and designer of some of the most prominent games out there, Neverwinter Nights, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Fallout 2, Fallout New Vegas, Pillars of Eternity, the new Pathfinder Kingmaker, and the list goes on and on. This guy has been such a huge influence on this genre, and as such, we can hopefully go into this new year and expected release of Alaloth with some confidence that this will be a solid game based off this guy's track record. So, I'm looking forward to it. Now, Alaloth is expected to release this year, 2019. And while we have a small handful of information now, I would expect the game to actually begin showcasing more gameplay, a little more information as we get near E3 and beyond. It just makes sense, especially a game releasing in 2019. If it's not releasing in the first half of the year, then they're definitely gonna be showcasing a lot of E3. But I wanna hear your guys' thoughts. Is Alloth looking like something that would fare well in the market? Something that you guys would play? Is this something that even makes sense in today's world? I wanna hear your thoughts. Let's get a conversation rolling downstairs. And as always, guys, this has been Vulcan, and I will talk to you guys next time.